I'm still with Mpo and we are talking everything football and the local football. We love it so much. It is part of our DNA. Calling Black Label Cup. Uh, first of all, I am very happy that it is not based on two or three teams. It now it, is, it includes the entire league. It includes the entire league. Is that a good news for you? It, it's, it, it's good news because one, you know that there's revenue that the league has managed mm -hmm. to secure and it helps the ownerships to be able to sustain their clubs. It gives them a bit more revenue that they can be able to. You win it, you become a lot a lot easier to be able to financially be be stable as a club. It's the good money. Any money is good money if you don't have. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't have yeah. money. No, many people don't understand how expensive it is for yeah. you to run a football club. And many people in on the continent, yes. they do actually run football clubs from their own pockets. Yeah. I mean, if you, if, you, if you look, I mean, we were, we were having this conversation with a friend of mine and he said, no, the Champions League should be working like Europe. And I said, Dennis Beckham used to drive from London to another country in Europe yes. to play. In. Mm -hmm. Try doing that in Africa, see how far you go. Yeah. Because the minute you leave, let's say it's in Bulawayo, just to get there alone. You, you know what? <laughs> you are going to the subject when I talk. So, but we finish with um, Kaling Black. Kaling Black. It, it is a welcome tournament. Uh, we cannot call it like a lot of fixtures for players' uh, legs. Look, it, it adds to to to, to the to the leagues. So you're gonna if you gonna, there are certain teams that you know by who they are, by their tradition, they wanna get to the final. competing in the final. Yes. So that's gonna add a lot of mileage on those teams. But they're so, used to it. We, we so used to, we, we used get, to have a league cup before. Yes. And so we have you, our FA Cup. We. We have empty and eight, so there is nothing new. There's nothing new, but you, you get used to it. Yes, it adds uh, uh, mileage on the legs, but it's a good competition. The league has managed to secure another sponsor that's able to contribute to to the growth of Showing football. that, uh, regardless of what many people do say, PSL is still a brand that attracts sponsors, which is a, a good thing, right? Look, PSL, PS, and PSL may have many other faults, but PSL as a brand, it's running because you need to be able to produce games week in and week out. You need to be able to... Well, explain it again. To produce a calendar <laughs> because people yeah, don't but, understand. Yeah. So you need to be able to have a you calendar. You have to travel the continent for you to yes. understand. That. So because you need to be able to say, we know that there are eight fixtures that are going to happen this weekend. That this is where the eight fixtures... And they do happen. And they do happen. And you've got a broadcasting partner and you've got other sponsorship like... A, Calling Black Label that have come on board, like the net banks that have come on board, like the one that's ended in MT8, and you're producing a calendar that's followed. And the league itself. And the league administratively run. There may be other issues that people have, but you are able to say to broadcasters, this is what I'm able to have. Because remember, globally, the biggest revenue that comes into any league is your broadcasters. Mm, mm. Because they want to be able to show live television. Yeah. And you are giving them that calendar to be able to produce that. So many people did not know that you know African football as well. So you are quite astute to football, African football. We'll talk about it now. And it is a privilege to be with you in the studio because not many people, they have been with a CAF president as you have been with a CAF president. <laughs> so uh, I'm talking about Dr. Patrice Mosepe. So you know the men's character and the men's um, decision making. He came with the idea of qualifiers should be regionalized. Mm -hmm. And then he came with the idea of the African Cup of Nations should be rotating around the continent. Mm -hmm. So this time around, you have it in the north and next time it's going to be in the east. Mm -hmm. Because of the domination of North African, mm -hmm. And the lack of competition in Southern Africa and East Africa, they are just coming now. Do you believe Dr. Patrice Mosepe, the president of CAF, made a correct decision that the qualifiers should be regionalized so that we can have in the finals of Champions League to have every region represented? Look, what that will do, and I believe it's a correct decision. Why do I believe that? Is because it now encourages teams to be able to qualify. So. If we, if we carry forward in a certain way, in certain areas you would know that some teams will never qualify because they'll either be in the Champions League or have structures in terms of national teams. When Egypt comes and plays Swaziland, you know that Swaziland may not make it. Mm. When Egypt may go down, so if you look at those And regions, when you go to the final tournament, you might not have the whole region not being yes, represented. Exactly. So what you want to be able to do, 
we're encouraging participation in terms of, uh, from a regional perspective, that will then lead to teams being exposed to being able to play in those tournaments and be able to participate and be able to gain prestige and be able to gain exposure. Because what you want is players from those areas to be seen, to showcase their talent. Now, suddenly, you're going to have scouts from Sundowns, you're going to have scouts from Malachi, you're going to have scouts from Simba, you're going to have scouts from Yanga. They're coming to see because their best will be able to show up mm -hmm. and you are able to get a player from a small country that can be able to, to shine through. I was told when I was young that the role of a president is to sell his country mm -hmm. so that he can bring business. Yes. CAF just announced partnership with Puma. Mm -hmm. What Dr. Motsebe had to do with that? Because I, rem I they do sponsor the club that he used to be a president of, which is Mamelodi Sundown. Do you think he played a role in that the relationship? So look, when you look at it, it was an open bid. Umbra was coming to an end and here's the table. And you then have a value to say, here's the, here's the line for you to be able to come to us as CAF. Because what has happened under Dr. Patrice Mutsebe's uh, tenure as the president? the value of CAF has risen. We had uh, broadcast spo sponsors that were sponsoring us. They owe CAF money because they have not paid. Eight million US dollars that year <laughs> for be in television from Saudi Arabia, So Qatar. Normally when, when that happens, you are able to say, but how are you a broadcaster that has not paid CAF and yet you are broadcasting the games? Because you are gaining revenue by broadcasting the games. Now you have new broadcast deal that have come. And we've just said, to, uh, a couple of minutes ago, most of the revenue at club level, at CAF level, anywhere in the world, EPL gets the revenue from who? From TV. Yeah. Now CAF is able to generate revenue from TV. With the AFL, they're going to be able to generate more revenue to be able to share with the structure of uh, CAF. So all the other uh, confederations from different countries will be able to have more in this revenue sharing and that will eventually lead to a higher quality of football in those countries and be able to produce a good product for CAF. Should Dr. Patrice Mosepe run for the second term? I would say yes, because I still... Does he want to run? Because, I mean, you, you, I, I'm not saying you know him intimately, but you have spent time with and spoke with, so you know the man's mind. Do you think, you, given every single thing that he went through with Africa, because it's not an easy place, do you think he still have that appetite to run? So look, for, for the first ter for, for the first ten, it would be robust because you still try, he was probably still trying to get his team, people to be known. But now in the second ten, you don't have to fight the first battles that you had. You've already, now it's about how do you maximize the opportunities that are there? How do you maximize the business side of it? Because one thing that you want to be able to have, and if you look at the history of the past, Africa was always used for votes and that was all. Yeah. We did not have a good relationship with the likes of FIFA, whereby we knew our voice counted. Yeah. So it was like, no, we need you to vote for a World Cup somewhere else. But now you are sitting whereby CAF has got a strong presence. They've got the ear of the president of, of FIFA and he's been able to show that he can be able to help the continent improve. Because at the end of the day, we would like for our teams to be able to say, we're going to the World Cup, we want to see the World Cup. A quarterfinal has been an African country. A semi-final has been an African country. A final has been an African country. Winning this thing. And all that is going to take resources for you to be able to improve continental football. Unfortunately, there's nothing for Mahala. There's nothing cheap. It's going to require money. Tournaments such as AFL, broadcasting partners that are coming on, the partners such as Puma that are coming on, they will be able to say, we are able to empower Africa to be able to put out better teams, both in the Champions League in Africa, at the world, at the world club football and international football. Talking about African football, uh, one of the critics around the continent of South Africa is, we are not interested in African football. Even the point where there are certain clubs, they will say they don't have to play in CAF competitions. How far do you think the presence of Patrice Mosef being the president of CAF has changed that? Look, what, what that has done, and, and, and I think it's the, I don't say misinformation, but it's understanding why did those clubs, because in South Africa we had Kaiser Chiefs that were saying they cannot participate. If you were to have a conversation with any club that has participated in Africa, African football is expensive. 
let's say you're playing in Central but Africa. But how come teams from Mauritania, Seychelles, where they are not professional, you have teams coming from Gambia, they still make it, they still travel, they... And if so, you look at their resources... So let, 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 let's put it this way. Champions League is probably the most expensive and the uh, Confederation Cup. Mm. Because you are now traveling. Let's say you're going to Gambia. How do you get to Gambia? Yeah. Don't have a, you don't have a flight that flies No, you go to France. You, from France, then you go... <laughs> so you leave the continent to come back into the continent. The, the, <laughs> so it's, it, it's those dynamics that you... But are, what do you think Patrice Mosepe has done so what, what, to African football in South Africa, the perception? So the perception now changes. Because now we want, as, as South African teams, at SADC, in the SADC region, you want to be able to represent. Because remember, you would have been represent When you're going to be president, you, you canvass in your one, your FA, yes. and then yes. in the SADC region. You want to be able to show up and be able to say that. But what he has done by being able to secure sponsorship, secure the EO of FIFA, secure the resources from uh, uh, around the world and his business, his business side, you are now saying you are now making sure that you are putting Africa in a better position. South African teams and also African teams are now able to get more revenue from participating. I mean, unfortunately, Marumo Gallants lost out and they got relegated. But how much revenue did they make from that? But you, you spent five hours on a space on Twitter mm. trying to convince us to see the reason why Mamelo de Sanda, not as your club, but as a South African team, has to play mm. in African League. Mm. Um, that is happening. Why we still have that conversation? Why we still have US planning, the PSL, the letter came from here, they went here. So we're not in the legal conversation yet. Mm. Why, why we have to, do, we're the only country still talking about if our club have to represent Look, as and, I, and I think that those are some of the things that as South Africans, we've got to then, we're very naive or we very, we live in a protected environment because in South Africa, if a player does not leave South African shores, he's still able to make an income. Oh, yeah. In other countries, they don't have a league that runs. So your only way of an income is for you to be able to go overseas and be able to do that. We've got a league in Botswana that has not started. Yes, Orlando Pirates may have lost to Joaneng, but Joaneng, their league has not started because they don't have secure uh, calendar, they don't have funds to be able to do that. So in South Africa, because of that protected environment, we tend to think the rest of the continent is like that, whereas the rest of the continent is not like that. You want to be able to say, travel a bit, you will see what Football that. is a blood that runs in people's veins. Basically, that's what you're saying. Yes. I mean, football runs and you want to be able to say, when you say you're the champions of the continent, you've gone through all that. And and some of the, the, the economic stuff, South Africans don't understand. You would find somebody say, why does Sundowns want a postponement? Why does Pirates want a postponement? Because like you said, you have to leave the continent to come back into the continent. And when you then arrive, you arrive in the capital city, you have to get into a bus. Yeah. That then takes you another Which is not hours. as big and comfortable that you are used to. So it takes me back to this last question for you, uh, Mpo. And be honest to this question, and you can give me your perspective. Are we a football nation? Is South Africa a football nation? South Africa, I'd say no. And most people may differ with me. Uh, the generation that grew up supporting football uh, that would be guys like my dad, my uncles, they took us to football. And if you look at when they took us to football, what is it that could we do if we were not at a football match? There wasn't much. If you look now, well, my son is playing PlayStations, my, they can go to movies, they can go to all these events, that musical, and it, there's so much competition for that space. But everywhere. No, but, but it's not everywhere, Chris. If you go now, and we, I'll use our neighbors in Botswana, do they have all these other stuff that we have? No, but you are comparing us with the West. I want to compare us with the best because we can only be the best if you compare ourselves against the best. If you are in Paris, there's so much to do. But when Paris Saint-Germain is playing... Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, and, 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 and I mean, that's the thing, forget... We have no, South I Af get you. We say are South we African. We are South Africans. We'll rather watch our club than watch our national team. I get no. We talked about that, which we'll talk. <laughs> we, 
club football started before the national team started. Yes. So that is the point. But your answer is such an important answer. I want people to understand where you are coming from. Why do you say we are not a football nation? One, two, what should we do to become a football nation? So for you to be able to become a football nation, you've got to be able to say, one, your structures are right. From your football development, all that participation that goes up to the national team, you are supporting that structure. Your local LFA should know you. This is Chris who lives in this area and this is how he's participating. He's participating in the development of football. He's participating in supporting his club. We're participating by being able to say, we're filling the stadiums. Are we going to the stadiums? Unless Chiefs, Pirates and Sundowns play each other, the stadiums don't get filled. I mean, I had a friend of mine who says, yeah, we fill Stellenbosch, you're filling up a university ground. That's, a, <laughs> that's, a, that's such a small bit. Simple. <laughs> I, 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 I am troubled because people who know me, they will understand how much I love my South African football and love South Africa. When you say we are not a football nation, should we expect our national team to be continent beta or world beta? So... And here's the funny thing. While we as supporters are not willing to support the teams as they are, <laughs> but we expect the best of them. So our expectation versus what we do does not match up. You, they are so misaligned that we expect the best, but on our side as supporters, going to the stadium, putting... But also you've got to be able to cut some people some slack and yeah. say, the economy doesn't allow that. How many is, people... And the unemployment in the country is high. It, it is... is is a football enthusiasm equate to the level of employment or unemployment? Because I'll give an example of my country of birth, DRC. Mm -hmm. Perhaps it's like the 80s in South Africa because I was a little bit late, where people have nothing to do. That's why they go to the stadium. And mm. even work, they don't have work. Mm. They go to the stadium because they become the only source mm. of From entertainment. entertainment. Yes. But when you go to Egypt, mm. when you go to Algeria, mm. it's different, my friend. Well, Egypt, they don't allow all of them to fill the stadium. That's <laughs> what I'm saying. It's, but they have to force them not to fill up the stadium. Yes. <laughs> and, and, and that's a culture that we've got to grow. I mean, if you look at the EPL at the moment, we'll go to Arsenal and Liverpool. If we play, if Liverpool is playing Arsenal in the Emirates, you can watch that game in London. Okay, you start getting another dimension. Listen, are we ready to have that in South Africa? No, we're not. By the way, statistically speaking, people don't know South Africa show more live football than any other country in the world. Yes. People don't know that. Yeah, and and when you look at it, we absorb so much and we participate so much that. It, and it, sometimes I think... And I say, so we just become a consumer. We, we but take it for couch granted. consumers. We, we, no, because we... I mean, you've got people who are saying, I'm going to watch it so that I can analyze and be on a space and be on a... But do you understand? I mean, and, and I say this when I take my kids to the stadium. Go there, take it in. You want to be at the stadium early. Watch the teams warm up. Watch Temba Zwane play. I mean, you look at Pirates playing. You look at Maswanga. You look at Mufuke. You look at all those youngsters that are coming up. You want to be able to have a live... Because I, I, in those countries, people go to the stadium, the game is finished, and then they go to their space immediately after the game. So it, the excuse is not sitting at home. Yes. I can sit with my pot, talk football, will never go back <laughs> or go to sleep or, or rest. This was a, such a, an important conversation. We talked about African football. We, talk about, we talked about South African football. And Mpo put a challenge to us by answering this question, are we a football nation? His answer was, no, we are not. So let's become a football nation. Paul, thank you once again for being here. I want to do this every week with you. Thank you very much for having me. I would have healed the next time you see me. Sundowns would have won a couple oh, of no, games no, more. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> forget about Sundown. Uh, su su sundown. I can never forget about Sundown. Sundowns is in the blood. You know, my, my, my worry about Sundown is the league might finish in January and Sundown will be in three competitions with three different teams. Here's, 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 here's my thing. Is it a Sundown's problem or should everybody lift up? By the way, now he's talking as a Sundown supporter. No, as a Sundown supporter, I say. <laughs> Mass, is, is it a Sundown's No, I'm not saying problem? it's a problem. I'm saying the, the, you have beauty, the, 
The beauty of that problem is yes. the same Sundown will have a team in a calling black label, a team in, in Champions League, and a team in African League um, that is starting. That, that is amazing. What's, what's, the, what's the slogan of Mamelodi Sundowns? What's the limit? Sky is the limit. Your ambitions have got to be said in your slogan, Sky. We never <laughs> stop. Thank you very much. Until next time, this is Foot Africa channel. Please go and follow us, subscribe. By the way, Mpo is often on Twitter. They call it now X. He does have amazing, amazing space. It goes forever. So don't miss it. You go and look for, I think it is Mposa 929. Don't forget that. Mposa 929. That way you're going to find Mpo. Thank you very much. Thank <laughs> you.